Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In the last lecture, we covered the configuration for SNMP version 2. In this lecture, you'll see the configuration for SNMP version 3. So you saw earlier that in SNMP version 1 and 2, the SNMP manager, that's our NMS server, and the SNMP agent, that's our router or switch, they recognize each other through simple unencrypted community strings. So it's not very secure. That gets improved upon with SNMP version 3, which does support authentication and encryption. With SNMP version 3, the security model uses users and groups. So we're going to configure a user on the router or switch, and we configure a matching user on the NMS server. That's how they recognize each other. There's also a group as well. So most of the settings are configured at the group level, and those settings are going to be applied to the user depending on which group it's actually in. There's three different security levels available, and these are configured at the group level. So normally, you're going to just use one particular security level, but it is possible that you could have one NMS server in one group that's got one security level and a different NMS server in a different group that's got a different security level. That would be a pretty weird thing to do, but it is possible to do that. The three different security levels. The first one is no auth, no priv which means no authentication and no privacy. With no off, no priv, no authentication password is exchanged and the communications between the agent and the server are not encrypted. So with no off, no priv, it still doesn't use a community string. It still uses a username because it's SNMP version 3, but that username basically replaces, works the same as the community string in SNMP version 1 and version Two. So there's not much point in doing that. It doesn't really give you any advantage over the old SNMP versions. The next security level we've got is off no priv. With off no priv, password authentication is used. So the NMS server and the network device will securely authenticate each other. When we do that authentication, the authentication is encrypted. So the user and username and password is encrypted, does not go in plain text. But after that initial authentication, no encryption is used for communications between the devices. So if the server pulls some information from the device, that's going to go over the network unencrypted. So the last one is the one that we're most likely going to want to use, which is off priv. With off priv, password authentication is used, again, the same as it was in off no priv, but communications between the agent and the server are also encrypted. So with off priv, the NMS server and the device are going to securely authenticate each other. That does not go in plain text. And also, whenever they're sharing information, that is also encrypted as well. So this is the most secure way of doing it. If we're using SNMP version 3, most likely we're going to be using off priv. Okay, so let's look at the configuration. You saw earlier in this lecture, we're going to have the group and we're going to have the user as well. Let's configure the group first. So at global config, I say snmp-server group. In this example, I've called the group flatbox-group. Then I say v3 to say that we're using snmp version 3. And in the example, I've used the context sensitive help. I've hit the question mark to see what the next keyword is. And this is where we set the security level of either auth, no auth, or priv. Then next thing that we do, so in the example I've set priv because I want the most secure level, then I've put the question mark in again to see what the next keyword is. Next keyword we've got access, context, match, notify, read and write. With access you can set an access list, I'll talk about that a bit more in the next slide, Context and match both apply to contexts and notify, read and write are about views. So let's see what that means. 
So the first keyword available there was access. What you can do is you can configure a normal access on access list on the router or the switch where you specify the IP address of the NMS server. And then when you configure your SNMP settings here, you can reference that access list, which means you're locking it down that this router or switch will only communicate with SNMP with that particular IP address. So you're locking it down to the IP address of your NMS server. The next keywords we had in there were about contexts. Contexts are used on switches to specify which VLANs are accessible via SNMP. So if you're configuring a switch, you might need to set that up so that your NMS system can access other VLANs, not just the default VLAN. And then the last thing we could set there were our views. Views can be used to limit what information is accessible to the NMS server. And we had a read view, a write view, and a notify view are all available. If you don't specify a read view, then all MIB objects are accessible to read. So by default, the NMS server can get all the different SNMP information from that particular device. So if you want to lock it down to only be able to gather, a, only be able to pull a particular set of information, then you would use a read view for that. Next one was a write view. If you don't specify a write view, then no MIB objects are accessible to write. So this works the other way. So by default, it can read everything, but it can write nothing. So if you want to lock down, limit what it can read, configure a read view. If you want it to be able to write anything, then you have to configure a write view. Without conf explicitly configuring a write view, it doesn't get any write access. So by default, the NMS server gets read-only access to all MIBs. The last one was the notify view. Notify view is used to send notifications to members of the group. Notification is a trap. If you don't specify any, then it will be disabled by default. Okay, so those were our views. So when I configure the group here in this example, the full command that I use is SNMP server group, flatbox group, v3 Priv. So I haven't configured any access list or any views or anything here. They are all optional. And because I'm using the defaults here, the NMS server that is in this group will have full read-only access to the device. Okay, so I've configured my group. The next thing I'm going to want to do is configure my user. So the first word I use again is snmp-server, but I'm doing the, the user this time. So snmp server user, and then for my example user, I've called it flatbox-user. Next, I specify the group that this user is in, and I'm putting it in the flatbox group that I just configured a minute ago. I say v3 for SNMP version three, and then auth is where I'm gonna specify the authentication algorithm that I'm gonna use. I can either use MD5 or SHA authentication. SHA is more secure, but it's a little bit slower. Okay, next up, so I've said SNMP server user, flatbox user in the flatbox group, SNMP version three, auth I'm using SHA and I'm using an authentication password of auth password for this example. So you know we talked about the three different security levels and there you specified authentication and privacy separately, but we configure the authentication and the privacy separately as well. So right now I've already configured the authentication. Next up, I'm gonna configure the privacy. So I say priv and I've used a question mark again to see what I've, options I've got here. And I can either use DES, triple DES or AES encryption. AES is the most modern of those. It's the most secure, but it's a little bit slower. Okay, after I configure that, so here, and I won't read out the whole, the whole command to you again. I've got up to, I'm using AES encryption. Next up, I specify whether it's 128, 192 or 256 bit. Obviously, the higher the number, the more secure it's going to be, but it's going to take more CPU cycles, be a little slower. So looking at the complete command, I've got SNMP server user, flatbox user in the flatbox group. It's using SNMP version 3. For authentication, I'm using SHA as my algorithm. My password is off password. And for priv, I'm using AES 128-bit encryption with a password of priv password. 
So that is my user and my group set up on my router or switch now. What I would do next is I would go onto my NMS server and I would configure a user there with matching settings here. So I would set it with the same username of Flatbox user. I would specify the off password and repriv password and that's me done. My NMS server is now going to be able to access my device and pull information from it. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.